Today I want to talk about a very important subject that personally I don't know a lot about in my life, but it's a very important principle that Jesus teaches us in the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are the psychology of Jesus, secrets to living a healthy and happy life. The last of the eight Beatitudes is about a very important issue in our lives. Jesus tells us here, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I personally don't know a lot about persecution. Many of you perhaps don't know much about it or experience much of it. However, you may be watching somewhere around the world and you have experienced or are experiencing great persecution. One of the worst experiences of life is to be rejected. It's one of the most painful emotions that we feel when someone rejects us. It makes us feel unloved. It makes us feel as though we're not valued and important. At times, we face rejection for Christ. The gospel, perhaps, is forbidden in a public school. A person turns down an opportunity to listen to the gospel when you want to share with them, and you feel rejected. The skeptic attacks the claims of Christ. Peers stop including a person when they accept Christ or call them too religious. The company you work for restricts free speech and prevents employees from talking about faith, or worse, requires employees to adhere to policies and language that is unchristian. All these are examples of persecution for righteousness sake. When we are rejected by the world, remember, we are accepted by God. And sometimes people's rejection of Christ and of the gospel is only temporary as they are under conviction by the Holy Spirit and God is dealing with their hearts and drawing them to the Savior. So don't always be discouraged when somebody doesn't want to listen or turns you off. They may be having spiritual issues going on God is speaking to them. God is dealing with them. And in that moment, they kind of are pushing back. But everything you're doing for them, the love you show them, the prayers you pray for them, when you share the word of God with them, trust me, it's getting in their heart. It's working on them. And sometimes they may seem to push away in the moment. But don't get discouraged by that because that probably is a sign that God is already dealing with their hearts and drawing them to Christ. The question is, how are we to respond? to persecution, whether it's mild rejection or it's overt persecution. There's some great lessons that we learn in Scripture about dealing with persecution, what it means to be persecuted for righteousness sake. First of all, persecution is the cost of discipleship. Jesus said, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belonged to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. John 15, verse 18 and 19. Jesus spoke of the cost of following him in Luke 9 and 23. If anyone would come after me, let him or her deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. And sometimes persecution and rejection for Christ is a small way that we carry the cross of Christ cannot remotely be compared to Jesus carrying the cross for us. But it's a small, it's a small price we pay at times to be faithful to Jesus. Second of all, persecution means sharing in the suffering of Christ. Now, this is a great mystery. We read about it several times in the New Testament, and I've often pondered it in my own life. What does it mean for me to share, to participate is what that word means. In the sufferings of Christ, Jesus suffered on the cross. He finished the work of redemption. In what way does it mean to suffer with Christ, to identify with his suffering? It means that we are willing to suffer persecution because of our love and our commitment to Jesus. When Paul the Apostle was in prison and he writes the letter of Philippians, he writes about the joy that he had in Christ. He talks about suffering for Christ. He wasn't there because he did anything wrong. He hadn't broken any laws. He was there because of a religious persecution and a political persecution, the way that we see people today in our world, sometimes made the object 
of a government intervention, almost a government penalty, but far greater in those days in the Roman government, far greater in nations around the world, we see outright religious and political persecution. We see it today in China, the communist dictatorships around the world. We see it where Sharia law is practiced in some nations and it's blasphemy to even talk to others about the gospel. And that's what Paul was the victim of, as many of the early apostles were in the church. But in the midst of that imprisonment, persecution, he writes in Philippians 3 and 10 in verse 11, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings. And so when we are persecuted, in that sense, we're identifying with the suffering Jesus, the Christ who is willing to be flogged for our transgressions, whipped by the Romans, the Christ who is willing to wear a crown of thorns, the Christ who carried a Roman crucifix and was nailed to it. In that horrible hour of persecution came the redemption of the world. The rejection of Jesus meant the redemption of the world by those that somehow wanted to get rid of him. But on the third day, he rose again triumphantly because he endured the suffering. The Bible says in Hebrews 12 and 2, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorned its shame, and sat down at the right hand of God the Father. And that's exactly what it means to suffer persecution, to not be ashamed of Christ. And in that sense, we share in the fellowship of his sufferings. We're not ashamed of Jesus because he was persecuted. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords, and yet he was willing to be despised and rejected of men. We're not ashamed of Christ. Paul said in 2 Timothy 1 and 12, I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. And he told Timothy, don't be ashamed of my chains. Don't be ashamed of me, Timothy, because I'm sitting in a Roman prison and I'm chained right now because I know whom I have believed. In Romans 1 and 16, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. And if we go through any rejection or persecution, we are in that moment sharing in the fellowship of his sufferings. And we are declaring, I'm not ashamed of Jesus. I'm proud to call myself by his name. You see, persecution, third of all, is the testimony of our faith. When you're willing to be persecuted and continue to hold your testimony and not get silent about it, you're standing up for Christ. When Peter and John, the first victims of persecution in the early church, were publicly flogged by a religious tribunal and told, don't preach in Jesus' name anymore, the Bible says that they rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus, Acts 5 and 4 to 1. These men, Peter and John, who had been with Jesus for nearly four years, and they were there for all the miracles. They were there for the teachings and the parables. They saw his glory. And yet things had changed. And now they're telling everybody about the hope that is in Jesus. And they didn't expect that, that some of the religious leaders, as a way that some people in religion will persecute Christ today flogged them, embarrassed them, commanded them, don't ever preach in that name again. And yet, instead of getting bitter or mad or angry about it or filing a lawsuit against them, it says they rejoiced that they were counted worthy. It's an honor when someone may reject you in the moment because you're a Christian. They counted it an honor they were worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus. That just means your faith is real and genuine and making an impact if you deal with some rejection for it. It's standing out. It's making an impact. The Apostle Peter tells us that, when, that we are blessed and we should rejoice when we suffer for Jesus' name. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 14 through 16, he says, If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed. For the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. You see, in that moment, there, there'll come a special, powerful anointing on you that'll help you stand up with even greater courage and boldness. If you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed. But praise God that you bear that name. If someone ever criticizes you for being a Christian, it's one of the greatest honors you'll ever receive in this life. Think of it that way. Look at it that way because that's exactly what it is. And consider yourself worthy to bear the name of Jesus. You've got enough faith that somebody noticed it. 
and that should make you feel good about where you are spiritually. You've got enough courage that the world noticed. Fourth of all, persecution brings spiritual maturity. It's an opportunity for us to grow in the image of Christ. The Apostle Peter writes about this and makes this point in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21 through 24, when he says, To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. So that's what discipleship is, isn't it? That's what spiritual growth is, isn't it? We, we follow the example of Jesus. And what was his example when he suffered? Well, Peter goes on to tell us in that passage that he committed no sin. No deceit was found in his mouth. When they insulted him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. And said he, Jesus, entrusted himself to one who judges justly. Just as Jesus faced the persecution of the cross and the interrogation of Herod and Pilate and the scourging of the Roman guards and the painful, agonizing death of the crucifix, when he had all power in heaven and earth to end it, but he died to atone for the sins of the world, what great love. You see, when we follow in his text, and we're willing at times to go through a rejection or persecution for his name, it helps our faith grow. It helps our courage grow. We begin to blossom. We're not weak. We're not timid. We're not powerless. We're not living under some illusion that faith in Christ has to be the easiest thing in the world. No, we have enough strength of character and courage to stand up and be counted. What an honor if we're rejected or suffer any form of persecution for the name of Jesus. We have enough faith that somebody noticed the faith of Christ in us. So when you're suffering and you're going through rejection because of Jesus' sake, in Jesus' name, in your witness, you're following the example of Jesus. When he was insulted, Peter says here, he didn't retaliate. And when you're insulted, don't retaliate. If somebody where you work says something to you about your faith, don't run to the HR department. Don't retaliate. Just rejoice that you were counted worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus. When he suffered, Peter tells us here in 1 Peter chapter 2, I just quoted the passage, when Jesus suffered, he made no threats, don't lash out. It's an honor. It's a badge of courage. You've got enough faith in your life that somebody noticed. And maybe they are under conviction. Maybe they're right now fighting. You know, when Jesus appeared to Saul of Tarsus on the Damascus Road and he saw Jesus in all of his glory, the Bible says he fell down before him in this incredible, dazzling moment of glory as he saw Christ. He said, Saul, why are you kicking against the ghost? Saul of Tarsus was under conviction from the moment he saw the stoning of Stephen in the streets of Jerusalem. And in that moment, he gave approval of his death. He was a religious leader. The Bible didn't say he threw any stones, but he was standing there. And then when Stephen died, it was just like the death of Jesus. The last thing Stephen said was, Lord, lay not this end of the charge. And then he fell asleep. I don't think he even felt the stones. There's a grace for the martyrs. Saul was there, a Pharisee, a religious leader. People respected him. He thought the people were doing the right thing. Stamp out this Jesus business. But you know, his heart was under conviction for what he had done. That was the day that God began to deal with him and Christ began to deal with him. And when finally when Jesus appeared to him on the Damascus Road, it was the end of all this time of conviction. And he said, why are you kicking against me, Saul? Why don't you submit to my will for your life? And that's when his heart was broken and soft and he repented. Look what a great man that Saul of Tarsus became, a world leader, a world influencer for Jesus. But he started as a great persecutor. But his approval of Stephen's death, he rejected the gospel in the moment. You see, it put him under conviction. And you may go through persecution or rejection, but God is going to use that to get people thinking about the gospel, to considering the claims of Christ. Your willingness to be rejected and even persecuted is a powerful witness. And finally, persecution is the ultimate test of our love for Jesus. I mean, how do we even know we love Jesus? We can say that's an emotional experience. But when we're willing to suffer for his name, that's the ultimate test of love. Jesus said in John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. And when we lay down our life for Jesus, it's the ultimate measure of our love. 
Finally, persecution brings a special reward in heaven. Jesus says, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus goes on in the Beatitudes to add a commentary on the blessing of persecution. Matthew chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. And blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. It's interesting how he amplifies the reward that belongs to those who are rejected for Christ or persecuted for him. Jesus told the persecuted church at Smyrna in the book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10, be faithful even to the point of death and I will give you the crown of life. If you're rejected for Christ, if your testimony is rejected, if someone makes fun of you, if someone tells you they don't want to hear about religion, if someone calls you a name or worse somewhere around the world, you face intense persecution. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Great is your reward in heaven. Count yourself worthy to suffer, to bear the name of Christ. Join me for prayer. Lord, we thank you today that you suffered for our salvation. We stand, Lord, in amazement of the mystery of the cross. We don't understand your sufferings, and yet we know through your sufferings came atonement and healing for the sins of the world. Lord, give us the grace to stand in this hour to be faithful to you, knowing that we will receive the crown of life. Use our lives as a bold, powerful, loving witness to others that they may come to know you the way, the truth, and the life. In your holy name we pray, amen. Thank you for joining me today. What a rich study the Beatitudes have been as we looked at the psychology of Jesus. I received so much personally, spiritually, in preparing the teachings. The Lord's showing me new things and insights about these powerful principles for life. You can go back and watch the entire series on the Mount Perrin app, the website. Check it out. Share with others if you missed any of the teachings. You can download all the study guides. You can share with others. Let's share the Word of God and continue to grow in grace and knowledge together. Let me thank you for your prayerful support of the ministry in every way, your generosity to support the work of the church. If you've not already started supporting the ministry, wherever you are in the world, you can give offerings to support Mount Perrin's missions work, our help to the needy communities to support the work of the ministry. Thank you for your partnership in ministry with us. Sunday's coming. I'm looking forward to seeing you and your family in church this Sunday for worship. we got a great day planned on campus, online. God bless you. Have an amazing day.